It's good to have a few tricks up your sleeve when animating in After Effects, so today I'm going to be showing you five great techniques that'll help you in your next project. What's up everyone, this is Jordan Bertone with Sonduck Film. Be sure to like the video, and let's get started. Our first animation is going to be a custom path animation using the Trim Paths tool. Here we have a basic composition, and to start making our custom path, we want to select the Pen tool, set Fill to None, Stroke to Solid Color, and we'll set the Stroke Width to 10 pixels. Now, use the pen tool to click and drag and create a nice and long curving path that grows across the whole composition like this. Once your path is made, open up the shape layer, select Add, Trim Paths, open the Trim Paths, set a keyframe for start and end at the start of the timeline, and set end to 0%. Move forward a bit on the timeline, set start and end to 100%, then highlight both keyframes for end and offset them by a few keyframes on the timeline. This makes it so that the line starts drawing itself, then after a few frames begins to erase itself so it travels across our path as a moving animated line. And now you know how to make a basic custom path animation using Trim Paths. Next, I'll show you three types of ways to manipulate the speed of your animation using Easy Ease. Here we have a composition with a bunch of circles animating in. We're going to focus on the circle in the middle, and you can see that it just has a basic scale animation on it. The first type of speed you can use for your animations is the default linear speed. This is how all animations start out when you make them in After Effects. You can recognize it by the diamond shape of your keyframes. In motion, linear animation looks like this, it just constantly animates at a set speed. If we wanted to smooth out the animation a bit, we can use the second way to manipulate time, which is Easy Ease. To apply it, highlight your keyframes and press F9. Now you can see the keyframes have changed to an hourglass shape. When I play the animation again, you can see it's much smoother now. The third way to manipulate speed is with the Graph Editor tool. You can do this by highlighting the property you're animating, clicking on the Graph Editor tool, and here you can freely manipulate the timing of your animation to customize it how you like. This is how the animation looks now after I manipulated it in the Graph Editor. Now you know the different ways to manipulate the speed of animations. Next, I'll show you how to make a simple transition animation with any shape you want. This is super simple. We'll start by selecting the Rectangle tool, set Fill to Solid Color, we'll make the color a dark gray, set Stroke to None, then double-click the Rectangle tool to make a rectangle the size of our composition. Now highlight the rectangle, press S for Scale, set a keyframe at the start of the timeline, uncheck Constrain Proportions, set the Y value of the scale to 0%, move forward a bit on the timeline, and then set it to 100%. Now you can see the shape animating out from the center like this, giving a nice transition effect. Next, we'll make a circular transition, so select the Ellipse tool. We'll set the color of it to white, then hold Shift and Control, and click and drag from the center of the composition to make a circle that covers the whole composition. Now we'll set a keyframe for scale at the start of the composition just like our rectangle, set scale to 0%, move forward a bit, set scale to 100%, then move the keyframes a few frames forward on the timeline to offset it with our rectangle animation. Now we have these two great transition animations using two simple shape layers. Before we move on, as you may know, creating motion graphics can be really challenging and time consuming. That's why we've made thousands of templates to help you save time and produce amazing work under one simple subscription price. For example, you can easily preview templates, let's say from our pulse pack, and then just click apply. Now you can quickly change the template parameters and you're done. So if you're looking to get an edge in your business or career, check out every template we have with our links below. Next, I'll show you how to make a line burst animation and how to repeat it around your composition. Start by selecting the pen tool, make sure fill is set to none, stroke is set to solid color, then hold shift and click to create a straight line like this. Open the shape layer, select add, repeater, add, trim paths, then open the repeater, set the copies to 4, open transform repeater, set the y value of the anchor point to 50, the X value of position to 0, and the rotation to 90 degrees. For Trim Paths, we'll do the same thing we did earlier, set a keyframe for start and end at 0%, move forward, set them to 100%, then offset the end keyframes, now we have our line burst fully created. To make it look more interesting, we'll duplicate the burst, move it a few frames forward on the timeline, duplicate it again, move it even further down, then change the rotation of the second burst to 45 degrees, and change its color to a nice light blue. 
Highlight all three bursts, right click, select Precompose, we'll name it Lion Burst, click OK, and now we have our burst animation as one layer that we can now duplicate and put around our composition to fill it up. Now you know how to do a burst animation and have it repeat across your composition. Lastly, I'll quickly show you how to use a simple expression and a few ways to loop your animation and have them play endlessly. Here we have an animated camera zoom and as you can see it just zooms in and then stays zoomed in. We want the zoom to loop, so what we'll do is hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch for our zoom animation, then type in loop out with a capital O, open parentheses, close parentheses. This is the loop out expression that will make our animation loop. But now you can see it zooms in, but then it restarts back at the start of the zoom animation which causes this abrupt jump. To fix that, we can go inside the parentheses of the loopout expression, add quotations, and type in ping pong. This makes it so that the animation will now go back and forth, looping endlessly. Now you know how to use the loopout expression to make looping animations easily. There you have it, five great techniques to use when you're animating in After Effects. Subscribe to the channel for more post-production tutorials every week, and remember, always be creating.